Hey guys, what's going on? So I'm here at Tapeworm Trail, where uh, we're going to be taking out the Dix Special, uh, <laughs> or the Dix GT as they call it, because uh, this bike used to be sold at uh, Dix Sporting Goods, and uh, we're gonna, I'm going to ride in one segment. I'm going to kind of break it down trail by trail, so I'm going to ride Tapeworm proper um, and see how it does in some old school technical stuff, and then uh, take it on Silkworm. I probably won't do the jumps, uh, and that'll be for another video, and then. Um, and in Parasite and kind of just talk about how I feel about the bike. So let me um, put the helmet on and uh, We're gonna hop on and do a uh, tapeworm and proper. So hang tight All right, Cole putting on my helmet and we're just gonna ride from Philip Arnold Park Over there. Yeah, it's kind of funny. I'm so used to a, a Dropper seat post that I keep thinking that the front derailleur on here the front shifter is the dropper because uh, it feels kind of low right now but again it's kind of cool to have a kind of nice am i at the top of my gears i'm not oh boy <laughs> plenty of room to go gosh i've raised the seat pretty high and i still got room to go and this is a size small this is the smallest size small bike I've ever been on <laughs> for a mountain bike. And I think I've ridden size small GTs before. <laughs> you know, the funny part about a front shifter on here is uh, feels like driving a stick shift car in a way like uh you have to get used to it again not that you're not shifting on the right but just having a front shifter so we're just headed towards tapeworm proper rather than take silkworm over there Oh man, so not used to this bike even. Yeah, because it doesn't have Magura brakes, my favorite brakes, on here either. But I'm gonna do an upgrade on brakes here too. And just see how I get along with the bike. The grips here are pretty comfortable. Not lock-ons, it's, you know, not in, like, uh, Lock-ons are are okay. I don't think there's an issue. I don't think there's an issue with um, non-lock-on groups. Yeah, you do the old hairspray method and get them stuck on here. And uh, you know, when they wear, you just take your box knife and cut it. I mean, I doubt you're gonna deal with carbon bars or whatever, but there's ways to break free the hairspray glue once you do that you know if you're gonna do the groups that way it's just that here in the pacific northwest it we're approaching the rainy months it feels like it's gonna rain now but yeah now we're entering tape room proper on the dix gt oh man Hang on, I gotta stop, and then, oh, I keep thinking I have a dropper, bad habits. I'm gonna put one on the next time around, uh, as my next trip here, hang on. Okay guys, I'm back. So I just wanted to make sure the camera angle was pretty decent. I might do it again just to make sure, it kinda sucks to do a whole trail vid. So the cool part about tapeworm is you start here, and you end right there, so it kinda, it's this nice big loop. So, let's go on a spin. And check this place out on a Dix GT. Not a bad handling bike. Oh, the technic super technical part. Hopefully I do okay in this. Oh my god. <laughs> wow, <laughs> that was cool. 
I haven't old school high posted in quite a long time. This has no dropper, so having to revisit high posting. And now I don't even have a proper helmet mount. I'm using one of those head mounts on my helmet. So sorry if this thing keeps sliding around. But this bike ain't doing too bad. Kind of no different than my old school bikes. I could see this, but stock, this is a pretty good capable bike, seems like. I mean, this bike has lived most of its years in uh, the neighborhood. Oh, I gotta raise this seat. This is like killing me. But I think um, if I do, I'm past the minimum insertion of the seat tube or seat post to the seat tube. Yeah, I think with a, a dropper, I could totally be kicking ass on this bike. But the thing is, I don't even try to find that sweet spot between not having the seat too high and low enough I can maneuver. All right, I gotta, sorry folks, I gotta pause this again. Make sure the camera angle's good. All right, nice, the camera angle's good. You can see how tall the seat is. Oh, yeah. Okay, maybe I will raise it just a little bit. Ugh. How much more depth? I, oh, I don't got much. Or some minimum insertion. It doesn't even. It doesn't even tell me on there. I'm going to wildly guess. Uh, right about there. Yeah. Sorry about the pauses, everyone. Okay, that's pretty good. Oh, that's way more comfortable. Oh. Oh, wait, do I even have the... Oh. Cool, the video's gone. Sorry, everyone. Uh, you know, this helmet's kind of shifty and the setup's a little bit kind of wonky. I normally do that rock, but I haven't high posted in a while. Meaning I haven't ridden a bike without a dropper in a long time um, outside of a road bike. But I haven't ridden a mountain bike without a dropper in a long time. And, uh, you know, definitely with the one part, I think if there's any upgrade you should do on a mountain bike, whether it's a Dick's bike, like, or a bike from Dick's, or sport, like, whatever, drop or post. Like, one of the coolest gadgets, and a lot of people who aren't into, don't know cycling that much, you know, when they see a drop or post, they're like, well, what the hell is that? That's cool. Oh. But yeah, this little 275 bike handles real nice. Love it. You know, definitely not as, uh, definitely a little more watts to put out compared to my Zaskar. Oh, now we're reaching a punchy hill. How does it do? Look at that. Awesome. Triple gears. I'm in the lowest one, I'm small, I'm in the granny gear. High post it, I gotta be careful, oh my lord. I don't miss high posting at all. This fork is pretty yeah, good though, you know, feels fine. Haven't, uh, had like I mean it does a job I think one of the things that always kills me is you get people 
that are like, oh no, man, you know, if, uh, uh, and this is for everyone who's buying a bike <laughs> big time. Yeah, if you're getting something like this from Dick's or Walmart or something, uh, and you're all like, I can't, you know, I'm gonna upgrade the bike on the forum. A lot of people will automatically tell you, get a new fork. But that's also like asking people, should you get a dog? Uh, there are different reasons for that. You know, like everybody's circumstance is different. <laughs> like if, uh, you know, there's things you gotta think about, like when you get a dog or even a new fork, you know, maintenance and if your budget really allows for it or to be frank, if if it's uh, just the right time for you to, yeah. But, you know, my point being, yeah, you have to factor, everybody will tell you, yeah, it's great to have a, a dog in the house or a pet in the family, but, you know, it may not work out for you. So, oh, pedal strike, and these are on 170 cranks. Ooh, let's see if I can, oh, I can do this technical bit. Hell yeah. So, lo and behold, a lot of people that ride tapeworm struggle on this. Like, we'll walk through it. Um, because we don't make the bypass. This is meant to be like a technical old school tough trail but not like dude I've ridden Squamish and this is easy and more like a little bit of a technical challenge so you come around up turn you have to come up here and this is on an incline so get up this and a lot of people get hung up there and then you your once your bike clears kind of get a set up here Sometimes by accident, I'll take a bad line and end up over here, but it works. Somehow I got a strike, a <laughs> pedal strike. I almost broke my toe. It's okay. I, I would get clipless carbon, look, uh, whatever. So anyway, my point being, you know, like a lot of us aren't pro athletes. A lot of us aren't being paid by some company or store to promote the bike. I mean, I mean, I'm not getting paid by Dix to talk about a product I don't sell anymore. Um, nor GT. You know, so even when I was an ambassador of the group, I wasn't getting paid. So that was more like, you know, kind of some access to some cool things like a shirt or whatever. But this bike is plenty fine. I think a kid who's just getting into mountain biking, this little inexpensive rig, even on the used market, it's gonna be a good bike. Like, you know, these wheels are pretty true. And look at that. This is awesome. It's a really good little bike. I mean, mind you, I think with time, as the forks get a bit dirtier and things, you're gonna, you know, this is gonna be a less responsive fork, but at least you can take it apart and work on it. If you're so inclined, as our Suntour sells the part to take off their little cap where the preload is, uh, I don't know how much it is now, but back then it used to be like five bucks or whatever. I know some people who do have the equipment to do it can take like a cheap Harbor Freight socket head and then groove in some notches to make themselves that tool. 
And if you can't, also another good way, because these forks are not, these SRXET forks are not complicated. Literally like a spring in there, clean out the insides, internals, and re-grease and oil. Good to go again. You know, put it back together. Look at this. <laughs> oh. Really fun. Good old solid bike. It's just such a... The gears work nice. Sorry, I'm trying to readjust my helmet. The weight of the GoPro is like... I'm making this a bit hard. <laughs> So me tilting this helmet way more forward than I like. So, you know, uh, I have to get used to this if I'm gonna hit jumps on this bike. I, I'll be honest, I'm not brave enough right now. Uh, well, no, I take that back. I, I probably hit the non-mandatory gap jumps. <laughs> there we go, non-mandatory gap jumps. Now we got another little steep climb and I'm actually gonna drop this down into super, it's lowest gear. There we go. Oh, okay, or not. Got caught up in there. So I gotta walk this backwards a bit. Come on. Yep, crapola. Try not to yank on this so hard that I do more bad than good. There we go. Okay, I can't max out the teeth. I gotta work on the limiter screw, but uh, let's see how this goes. Oh, from the start, it's all right. Having to readjust my helmet. <laughs> I'm seated. Okay, if I get up then. A bit torquey. All right. Okay, so these brakes are fine. And I'm running Vittorio Barzo tires on here. I can't wait to put a dropper on this bike. That will happen tonight. Uh. Cause uh, high posting sucks. I got a race face, a spare race face stem and handlebar that uh, are yeah, like 35. It's from my sanction, but it's the only other parts I got that allow me to put a wider bar with a similar reach on here. And then try it again. I think a dropper makes all the difference. That'll be my next video segment. Does a dropper make a difference? I don't think any of us need to, I think a lot of us know the answer. Wow, but this bike is very, you know, mind you, a lot of you seen my videos, I ride, I ride a lot of different bikes, old bikes, new bikes, my race bikes, cross country, enduro, trail, retro modified bikes, retro modified meaning, I modified them with something to make them feel a little bit more contemporary and more enjoyable. Oh, sorry, I gotta check this camera again. This sucks. All right, hang on, I gotta tighten this. My strap went loose. All right, thanks for pausing or dealing with my pause. I'll. Uh, Oh, I'm putting the helmet back. Oh, there we go. That's a lot better. My strap was coming loose. It's like Tommy Boy, where, if anybody's seen that old movie, oh, I gotta watch my head here. Oh. Um, 
where you know um brian the late brian dennehy asked in the movie to david spade's character how did i look and david spade says chubby but the other funny part is like oh this suit makes me look fat no your face does like that's how i feel about me wearing this helmet like it's my face like i'm loosening the straps man okay this is a pretty i think anybody who's looking on the craigslist marketplace and this is the year 2024 you know looking for just a good little mountain bike for your kid the dix gt aggressor pro definitely gets my blessing it's a it's a good little trail bike for for any kid who's new to mountain biking feels durable definitely feels durable um, not too heavy and uh all around like a good uh, climbing bike you know if you're not racing The brakes will work fine in the dry. And definitely, uh, if you're five foot six, get a medium. <laughs> this small is too small for my taste, but I'm making do. And if you don't have yeah i think if you find one you know you can find a gt aggressor pro like this one for maybe trying to negotiate 150 bucks us dollars um yeah if it's in close to pretty good shape like yeah this wasn't this was a garaged bike and it was also not a mountain bike this is a we do have a trail in my neighborhood but it's nowhere like this um and the kid who rode it then i used to see the kid in the neighborhood ride this bike and just pedal around you know never did anything crazy or stunts never and i mean that explains like even the chain stays on here are not beat up But this is a good little solid bike. Like, yeah, it's uh, not gonna be the fastest bike. And yeah, it looks kind of dumb with a dork disc and this plastic bash guard. Um, I took out the kickstand, that was a must. Um, comes with this really bulky kickstand and I'm like no I, I'm a I don't use a kickstand and plus I don't need all that stuff snagging as you can tell here all the vegetation easy to catch get it caught on things on your bike but this fork works pretty good you know it doesn't I mean for just going around here like two miles an hour And tapeworm for this side of Washington State for a little bit of a neighborhood trail. It is more of a um, one you don't take beginners on usually because it's considered fairly technical and it's tight as you can tell. And we're going to reach sections where I, I am going to ride a bit into the tech stuff. But for the Titan Twisty, this feels like a good bike. Definitely easier to maneuver than my LTS Force, that's for sure. But my LTS Force is basically a nice, big enduro bike. And this is your budget-friendly mountain bike. 
and it has the creature comforts it has quick release nothing that your bike shop would be like i don't even know what how the hell to work on this bike wow look at that this is usually a tight turn what a cool 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 bike i like it not fancy but if you're just looking to have some good fun on some trails that are kind of lower speed this bike is definitely gonna fit that bill I haven't had a chance to crack into the middle gear at all look at that cool Manu maneuvers because this is a small bike huh <laughs> stellar's J bird but uh you know bike maneuvers just like a 26 or I like this bike cannot wait to do other just minor upgrades or swap outs I don't know if they're necessarily upgrades but part swap outs and see if we can make this bike a little more fun for someone like me steep shoot yeah man I felt 90s high post All right, comes a technical bit. Good, Let's see if I can do it. I didn't have to pedal up until just now. That's a really rooty section. Now we're gonna go on these wood skinnies. <laughs> Pretty good. Nice. <laughs> really fun. <sighs> Handled that. I didn't have to fight the bike. <sighs> Which is real nice. I'm gonna go. Might make this my regular little tapeworm bike. Well, they all are. But this is fun. Hit this wood bridge, ride this wood bridge here. Look at that. What a, the seat isn't too bad. But I haven't been sitting on it for like over an hour or so. That could all change. Yeah, I got to put a dropper in here because on this bike, the height I need this seat is like pretty high. But when I approach sections here that are a bit steep and I don't want to high post it, you know, be nice to have that clearance, especially for jumps. Like, I know a lot of people on here are going to say, uh, just deal with it and blah, blah, blah. But, you know, if I can make this bike more fun for me, guess what? I'll want to ride more. That was fun. I want to ride more. Just gets me excited for enjoying a, getting the most enjoyment from this bike with very few things to change out. And I, I think the driver posts one of them. These are 170 mil cranks and Man, this button bracket has to be pretty low. 
I'm like, oversized nine shoe, and I'm heel striking the ground when I turn. Oh, wow. So, that's the first leg done here at Tapeworm on the GT Aggressor Pro. You know, the tires was a, definitely a nice change. These grips are not lock on, but they're nice and soft. Like, did you, uh, probably keep these when I swap out the bar. But the, as you can tell, this, uh, look how much length they got. I mean, just about roughly six inches of seat post would bear like the minimum or ballpark minimum in here. And uh, pretty good. Wow, so, and a pretty quiet bike. I mean, 160 rotor, 160 rotor, a mechanical disc does the job real well. Like, um, for as fast we're going, or I was going, and uh, felt like I had plenty of control. Ergonomically felt good too. Um, so that's it for riding Tapeworm. Capable bike. Capable bike for one of the Seattle area's more technical local backyard trails. Um, I bet, I, you know, I should take this to Tiger and just beat on it, but uh, maybe I will, who knows. And these plastic pedals, you know, they got these little nubs. Oh, I clearly have broken a couple off now. Um, you know, I'm gonna swap these out for sure. And, uh, you know, maybe the bar just to make it more jump capable. But yeah, that'll be the next uh, thing. But uh, next video, I'll be riding Parasite. Trouble just tight and twisty. And I think I'll hold off on riding Silkworm because I don't have a dropper on here. And there's like quite a few jumps. I could drop the C post on here, but the only problem is there's a mix of ascending and descending and stuff and it just makes it a pain to have to do it all the time so uh when i do silkworm i'm gonna have a drop around this already probably with the original seat and go from there but as the the bike as a whole it, very capable like if i didn't want to stun on this bike like it, it's a perfect fit for anybody who wants to get into mountain biking on the cheap and simple you know you got to remember you know, when it comes to winter, like up here, it's going to be fall. It's already fall based on temp, but, you know, easy to maintain, not expensive parts. So if any of these go bad, you can upgrade. The fork, easy to service. If something happens to it, probably find a used one for pretty cheap or, you know, just upgrade and get a RockShox one for, it will be the price of the bike, but this feels like a pretty sturdy frame. Um, didn't creak at all, good build. So... Even though these are cheap parts, it was, as you can tell, a pretty quiet bike um, outside of any rattle because it runs external. So that's it. Hang on. Um, I'll be doing the Parasite um, segment in the future. But as for now, a great, a great budget bike for really enjoyable bike rides. All right. Talk to you later. Bye.